Christmas Day 1957 was the first year the Queen's speech was broadcast on television. It was also the year that one of England's most baffling unsolved murders took place. On Monday the 30th of December 1957, 17-year-old Anne Nobler enjoyed a rock and roll dance class with her friends at Lord Hall, Watford Technical College. She said goodbye to her friends saying, quote, I'll see you Friday and boarded the 391 Green Line bus to Marshalls Heath, Herefordshire. She got off the bus at the Cherry Tree pub at the bottom of Marshall Heath Lane. This was confirmed by her friend Shirley Edwards, who saw her there at 6pm as she passed on her scooter. This was the last time anyone saw Anne alive. She was just a quarter mile from her home. Anne lived with her brothers and parents, Hugh and Ira. Hugh was a successful businessman selling motorcycle helmets. They reported Anne missing within an hour of her not arriving home as expected. Anne was, quote, a quiet, home-loving girl. She had no boyfriend and at the time of her inquest, her father said she was a person with no cares or worries whatsoever. This was so out of character, alarms were raised immediately and the police began a detailed search using trained dogs. A local resident reported seeing car rear lights further up the lane around the time of Anne's disappearance, but there was no sign of Anne. On the 31st of January 1958, brothers Hugh and Brian Simmons were taking a lunchtime walk with their dog Rip in Rosegrove Woods. Hugh described what happened. Quote, we had gone about a half a mile along the path when Rip ran into the wood. Adding, I followed him and in a clearing about a hundred yards into the wood, I saw the girl's body lying there as though asleep, but I knew the person must be dead. Anne was found seven miles from where she was last seen. She was in the scrub 300 yards from the main road. She was fully clothed and had her glasses on. Her belongings were found close by. Curiously, she was found in an area that had been searched by the dogs on New Year's Eve. Detective Chief Superintendent Robert Irwell from Herefordshire CID headed the investigation, assisted by Detective Superintendent Richard Lewis of New Scotland Yard's murder squad. The post-mortem was carried out by Dr Francis Camps, a Home Office pathologist. The cause of death was strangulation. She had also likely experienced a sexual assault. The most surprising aspect? Anne was frozen solid and showed signs of being refrigerated. Her stomach contents showed she had died soon after being abducted, and the food she had consumed that day hadn't been digested. The murder became, quote, one of the most baffling for years, and became the focus of attention of the national press, who dubbed it the Deep Freeze Murder. Although she was found fully clothed, she had been stripped and redressed. Buttons on her undergarments had been incorrectly done up. The motive was assumed to be sexual. It was theorised that she had been picked up between the bus stop and home, possibly by someone that she knew. The freezing of Anne's body could not have happened naturally. The temperature in the period between her disappearance and discovery had been quite mild. She was most likely frozen soon after death and then stored. She was then carried from there to a vehicle and transported to the woods and carried to the dump site as there were no signs of dragging in the wood floor. The murderer must have been strong to carry the 11 stone frozen body. Biologists analysed the difference in the growth of plants under and beside the body and concluded she was probably placed there up to two weeks before being discovered. But wouldn't the body have thawed even in a winter weather? 2,000 people were interviewed and refrigeration units within a 30 mile radius were investigated. Local farmland, outbuildings and factories were also searched. Particular attention was paid to refrigerated vehicles, even ice cream vans. Detective Chief Superintendent Elwell said of her killer, He may think he has committed the perfect crime, but we shall never rest until he is caught. But unfortunately, the case remains unsolved. There is an indication, though, that the killer wasn't as confident that he would get away with the crime. In Anne's purse was a number of coins, amounting to 30 shillings, £1.50, that were not hers. 
Had the killer deliberately placed them there to suggest the motive was not robbery, a cunning act in 1957, when the death penalty had been abolished except for murder in certain circumstances, including theft. So if a killer was caught and could prove he had not stolen anything, he would not hang. If he could prove he had raped and murdered Anne rather than robbed her, then the crime would not carry the death penalty. The coins were examined for fingerprints, but seemingly none were found. The only arrest and conviction connected to this case was that of 25-year-old Luton man Walter Edward Nunn. In the month where Anne was missing, her parents were taunted by menacing phone calls, which then turned to Hugh and Brian Simmons when she was found. Hugh received a call asking, Was that your son who found the body in the woods in Whitwell? Tell him we'll be over to get him on Wednesday night. He was so disturbed that he slept with a shotgun under his bed. Walter received a well-deserved six-month prison sentence. Anne's case has been reviewed several times in the years following the murder, with the most recent being in February 2017. It is likely the murderer has died in the intervening years. There is only a slim chance of this case being solved because no physical evidence remains, so no DNA analysis can be performed. Her younger brother, Hugh, released a statement in 2017 following the last review, which described Anne as a much-loved, gentle and caring sister. He says, No day passes without me thinking of her and the tragic circumstances and mystery surrounding her death. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think of this case in the comments below and I look forward to welcoming you in the next one.